Hello, and this is Mr. Catcher Side with um, RNSG 1341, Common Concepts of Adult Health. This is lecture, I believe it's lecture five, Genitourinary 2, second part of that series. We're going to be talking today about men and women's reproductive health and sexually transmitted diseases. Um, this will be another previously recorded um, lecture. This is really a very, very brief lecture, and so what I'm going to do after this lecture is I'm going to include videos on, on all of the disruptions from a different source um, so that you're getting your hour's worth of lecture um, just to make sure you've got everything that you need there. On the test material here, um, these are the things that are going to be very important for you to have um, studied in your book um, and made, you know, concept maps over. The first two things, obviously, you can't do concept maps on assessment, but you need to understand uh, the male reproductive system, the female reproductive system, and how to do assessments on both of those. The disruptions over this material that will be on your test, dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, menopause, fibroids, BPH, ED or erectile dysfunction, HPV, syphilis, herpes simplex 2, chlamydia, pelvic inflammatory disease, and gonorrhea. And then for pharmacology, um, because a lot of the medications for um, the STDs and so forth, since a lot of those have to do with um, the immune system, you know, antivirals and antibiotics, we're going to cover that in the immune system. So the only pharmacology you need to worry about for this um, test or for this part of the test is um, your BPH meds and your erectile dysfunction medications. So without further ado, um, you'll have your lecture that was recorded previously and then several other videos that you'll need to watch. Again, please make um, concept maps for each one of your diseases and each one of your pharmacology classes here so that you can commit um, these items to memory. Female reproductive problems. Um, We're going to have dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, menopause, fibroids. These um, all have to do with the health of the uterus. Um, so a lot of the causes can be kind of similar. Some of these can be related to one or the other. So it's going to be very important. I don't have time to dig into each one of these. Um, but maybe maybe uh, one of our female students can give us kind of a, a two-minute synopsis on dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, menopause, and fibroids really quickly. Do I have a volunteer? <laughs> okay, which one is it that you're asking about? The, the four female problems, uh, dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, menopause, and fibroids, just kind of give us a two or three minute synopsis of those. Okay, um, so dysmenorrhea is just like a, a painful abdominal cr um, cramping, um, just like a pelvic, I guess when you have like a pelvic disease, stuff like that. Um, that's just menorrhea. And then endometriosis is just a condition with the um, endometrial tissue around the, um, the uterus. And then Kind of and out. then, and then menopause. Menopause is just um, the time where women stop having a menstrual cycle. Okay. 
Right. And what's the definition for menopause? How many, how long do they have to go? Um, the, the definition for menopause is, well, usually it's the, the average age of women who start at 52 years old, but they can vary between 40 to 58. So how many, how many, well, I guess my question is how many uh, menstruation periods do they have to miss to be diagnosed with menopause? Oh, a whole year. So, 12 months. 12 months. 12 months. Uh -huh, 12 months. Very good. And I think there was one more fibroids. I'll let you guys read up on fibroids on your own. I'll talk about the two male problems real quick BPH and ED, uh, benign prostatic hypertension. Or, right. Huh? That's because I, I was talking and I think I did pre I pressed the mute button when I was talking about the, the fibroids with the leomyomas. I'm sorry. I forgot nope. I was on mute. No worry. Don't worry about it. Um, BPH, basically this is different than prostate cancer. It's not the same, but it can be a precursor to it. And it's just where you're uh, over time, um, especially if you have comorbid conditions, um, Um, your your prostate will enlarge and impede the flow of urine. Um, I'm sure we've all had a, a dad or a granddad, or maybe some of us are old enough to where it's starting to happen to us. Um, and typically, um, there's some things you can do to slow it down, slow the growth down. There's some medications you can take. Um, and also, there are... Um, procedures that can be done. TERP, a transurethral uh, resection of the prostate is basically where they go in there and do a rotor rooter um, to open the passageway up. Um, it's very bloody. You have to have um, constant bladder irrigation while that's going on, and that has to be watched continuously. Um, it can be very painful, but it's also very effective. And ED is what it sounds like, erectile dysfunction. Um, and that has to do, they're finding more and more, this actually has a lot to do with your cardiac health. This is kind of the canary in the gold mine. If you've got a really bad ED, um, and it's not because of medication that you're taking, um, it might be due to um, your coronary, it could be due to arthrosclerosis, and all of the conditions that go along with that. There have been people who have reversed their cardiac disease through exercise and diet, and their ED completely disappears, even though they've been told this was something they were going to have to suffer with the rest of their life. Um, and then there's medication for that, too, just usually to... Um, the medication we use for that, and that's discussed in your pharmacology book, really focuses on um, sexual relations and how to, to manage that with that. Well, um, I'm sure we have all of our opinion. It, it does happen to a large degree of men. Um, with the sexually transmitted diseases, I'm not going to go through each one of these, but it's important that you know all of them to the degree that you wrote them up on your on your cards. Some of these are viral, some of these are bacterial. Um, with the viral, you have them for life. There's no cure. Um, the antiviral medications really just help reduce the half life that you have to worry about with these. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of edu a lot of your nursing interventions are going to be on. Um, <clears throat> a lot of your nursing interventions are going to be on patient teaching, um, how to avoid outbreaks, how to, understanding that even if you don't have lesions or something that you can still be um, passing it around. There's there's people with you know herpes or HPV that have never had lesions. Um, but they do have the active virus and they're passing it along to other people. Um, with your bacterial, 
Um, having the disease does not infer immunity. You can still get it again and again and again, um, especially if your partner has it. And there is um, a thing in there you need to, to learn. Um, let me go to the STD page real quick. You can actually now, a lot of states are letting doctors uh, write prescriptions, not only for the patient that comes in, but for their sexual partner, so that this um, reinfection doesn't just keep getting passed around like a ping pong ball um, in that family. This is chapter 52. Um, the STDs that are in chapter 52. Mr. Beasley, did you have a question?